Truck stops may not be what you think of when you think Good Eats. Think again. Really good old fashioned comfort food. It's a destination for Vermont flavor. It's the P&H Truck Stop, a landmark just off of Route 91 in Wells River, Vermont. Yes, a mainstay for truckers like Ron Plant, who's been coming here for nearly 40 years. Not just truckers, but anybody would want to come here to eat. And they do. Anybody like Jane and Michael Stern, authors of Road Food. They've been here several times. I think they fell in love with the original wallpaper. It used to be all uh, trucks. For the record, the authors also fell in love with the fresh baked bread, which unlike the original wallpaper is still here, along with their dinner rolls, not to mention the mouth-watering pies. You ever get the maple cream pie? I don't get into desserts. Uh, more for me, I say, but not before sampling that homemade hash. On this morning, also enjoying breakfast, was Sharon Cassidy, whose father, Delbert Leet, started the P&H over 30 years ago when he tore down his barn and put up gas in a food counter for truckers, never imagining the mix of customers he'd one day have here. Is that the irony that he started it for truckers? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Sure, things have changed. We used to be fully 24 hours. I started with a section about that big at the counter. Things have expanded along with the clientele, but the truckers still make it a must stop because of the food. And so does everybody else. I think we've been just known as a friendly place to come with good food. Check and check. And as for that no dessert at breakfast thing, too much to get another slice with lunch? In Orange County's Tunbridge, I'd hoped to renew some old acquaintances. It had been 20 years since my last story here. No idea who that guy is. Tunbridge, on the other hand, looks exactly the same. Minus, alas, one of those acquaintances, but the other still very much here. I used to say I'm the only filmmaker in America who can shear a sheep and milk a cow. John O'Brien grew up here on his family's sheep farm in Tunbridge. After returning from college, he moved back here and pursued his passion for filmmaking. In 1996, he created an indie hit with Man With A Plan, which he wrote, shot, produced, and directed. Made on a shoestring budget, it was a satire about a broken down dairy farmer named Fred Tuttle, who runs for Congress because he needs a job with decent pay, no heavy lifting, and good health insurance. I spent all my life in the barn. Now I just want to spend a little time in the house. In real life, Fred Tuttle was the same person, an aging Tunbridge dairy farmer and John O'Brien's friend and neighbor. I did several stories in the wake of the film. After all, Fred Tuttle had become a genuine celebrity. Fred still reverberates, I think, throughout Vermont culture and, and certainly politics. It's interesting in some ways, though, that a younger generation doesn't even know who he is just because 20 years, you know, you have kids born and they're like, who's Fred Tuttle? Fred Tuttle died at his home in Tunbridge in 2003. John O'Brien, his wife Emily, and their two sons still keep sheep at the farm, and in 2015, John won a seat on the Tunbridge Select Board. I like public service, I like problem solving, I like people. Then in 2018, in a particularly ironic case of life imitating art, John was elected to the Vermont House of Representatives, winning for real a seat his friend Fred had won in film. I was running against a dairy farmer who happened to be the second last dairy farmer um, in the legislature. In their spare time, John, a justice of the peace, and Emily, a photographer, rent the farm for weddings, a scene we had to only visualize on this bitterly cold day. You're up there and you're looking out you towards the Green Mountains. Crazy. It's a great place to get married. It's end of the road. A sheep would come up to the fence and watch the wedding ceremonies. It is also, John still feels, a great town and county to live in. Most people who live here don't want to leave. It's such a beautiful place and everybody knows each other. You go to the Tunbridge Fair, every two minutes you're going to run into somebody you went to school with or you're related to or you do business with or you're happy to see because it's the only time they come out of the hills. Fred Tuttle was a fixture at the Tunbridge Fair, one of many things John never forgets about his friend. He still echoes. He does. Seems like on a day like today, like with you guys filming, it seems like, wait, I must be going down to Fred's, picking him up and we're off on some adventure with him. It was some adventure adventure in a special Vermont town that inspired it all. And if you're not familiar with Fred Tuttle or would like a reminder of him, check out our website. There's a link to one of his film clips. Yeah, you can also help us decide what it sounds like when he says his <laughs> name in that clip because uh, he's a very funny guy, but not necessarily known for his elocution. And a lot of people think it sounds like furry turtle. 
So furry turtle, Fred Tuttle, you decide. <laughs> Little game we play. Tomato, tomato. <laughs> All right, next, the goats are in charge on this farm.